Hey guys, I'm Karen from the session team and I don't have to tell you how hard it is to avoid being tracked and commodified online. This has led to an explosion of private messaging app use around the world over the last 10 years. Um, but not all private messaging apps were created equal and we don't all have time to research the applications that we use every day. Some applications uh, make this even harder for you by marketing themselves as being more private than they are. Um, a private messaging app essentially is an application that encrypts your messages, but there are several different types of encryption. There are different types of encryption protocols and even an application that uses the best possible type of encryption with the best encryption protocol might still be leaking certain personal information known as metadata. You can learn more about that here, but that's not what we're gonna focus on today. What we're gonna focus on today is four main things that you should look for in a good private messaging app. And we're also gonna spill a bit of tea and call out two applications that you should definitely avoid. All right, so here's a quick checklist of four things that you should look for in a good private messaging app. Number one is end-to-end -end encryption. There are a few different types of encryption, but end-to-end -end encryption is the only type which will ensure that the recipient is the only person who can decrypt your message. Um, if your private messaging app doesn't use end-to-end -end encryption, it's not a private messaging app. Number two is metadata protection. So things like your identity, the identity of the person that you're talking to, when you're talking to them, and how often, a variety of other things can all be exposed even if your application is using end-to-end -end encryption. There are a few different ways that you can approach obscuring people's metadata. In the case of Session, we don't require any personal information to create an account, and we also use onion routing through a decentralized network in order to obscure things like your IP address. Number three, uh, any private messaging app worth their salt is going to be open source. And what this means is that all of the code is completely transparent and can be reviewed by anyone. This means that anybody is able to take a look at the code and look at exactly how the application will function and make sure that there are no hidden surprises, which you really don't want when you require secure messaging. It also means that it's possible for the application to be audited by a professional security research team and any private messaging app that you use should be reviewed recently by one of those firms. The fourth thing that you want to look out for is you want your private messaging app to be operated by a registered nonprofit. This isn't necessarily essential and there are some very secure private messaging apps which are run by for-profit companies. but. To give you an example of why this is bad, one of those applications is Wicker. And at the end of this year, Wicker's customer facing application will be shut down because they were bought out by Amazon. An application that's operated by a registered nonprofit can't be bought or sold. And the sole priority is your security. Okay, so it's time to spill a bit of tea. There are two very popular messaging applications, which many people consider to be private because of the way that they market themselves, but which don't provide adequate security at all. The first app that I am going to call out is Telegram. Telegram has 800 million users. Nearly a billion people use Telegram every month. And Telegram also does not have end-to-end -end encryption enabled by default. Their encryption protocol has been widely criticized by security researchers and they don't offer any form of encryption for group chats. So in summary, Telegram sucks. The reason that people think that it's private is because they market themselves in many ways as private. Um, this is something that at Session HQ we refer to as privacy washing. You can learn more about that here. So essentially this concept is ripping off the concept of greenwashing. Um, in which non-environmentally sustainable companies will try to present themselves as environmentally sustainable. Many companies do this with privacy because privacy is valuable, but it's a lot of work to pull off. Telegram is very guilty of privacy watching. They market themselves as private very strongly, but they clearly aren't dedicated to privacy. One example of this uh, would be their people nearby feature which is something that they implemented a year or two ago, where if you opted in, you are able to see people within a radius around you who also use Telegram. Um, it didn't give away your exact location, but hackers were very quickly able to triangulate your exact position using this feature. The next application that we're gonna be calling out today is a little application called WhatsApp. 
Now WhatsApp uses end-to-end -end encryption by default, and they also use a great encryption protocol. And this is, this is wonderful, you know, but there's one big problem. WhatsApp was bought out by Facebook in 2014 for $20 billion. Uh, Mark Zuckerberg and his cronies absolutely expect to receive a return on that investment and Facebook's business model revolves entirely around collecting and selling people's personal information. This clearly does not mix very well with a private messaging app and anyone who requires privacy should absolutely avoid WhatsApp. Despite using end-to-end -end encryption, a lot of personal information in the form of metadata is still created and collected when you use WhatsApp. This information is essentially sold to the highest bidder, but that's not the only problem. In 2022, WhatsApp received about 500,000 requests for information from the government and they complied with about 75% of those. Despite all of these security issues and the fact that no one who really requires privacy would ever use WhatsApp, they have spent countless amounts of money marketing themselves as private over the last couple of years. As I mentioned before, privacy is valuable. And for this reason, WhatsApp engages in privacy washing as well. In fact, they have been running very expensive marketing campaigns for many years, which all revolve around privacy, despite the fact that there are many other options for messaging, which are far more secure and far more private. So there you go. Four things to look out for when you're picking a private messaging app and two applications to absolutely avoid if you require security and privacy. I hope this has been useful for you and I hope that you can protect your personal information a bit better now that we've had this chat. Thanks for stopping by.